All right. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, so we're going to rip through this pretty quick. This is my third, fourth, fifth attempt or whatever. I tried doing it a simpler way. Um, actually, it wasn't simpler. That's why we're doing this. But I, I had a spreadsheet out with all the guys that people in Patreon wanted me to watch. And I started trying to build out like a grading system. But then I wanted to add context. And so I added something else. And then I had like specific Jordan Love stuff, like his stats that I wanted to track. And then I had run like why couldn't we stop the run and why did our run fail so i had all these different things and it just was a friggin mess so i was like you know what let's just let's just go through this um because again i've gone through this a hundred times um i'm getting tired of, of like the first quarter here but um real quick this is the flea flicker look it goes without saying this is this is a fantastic pass this is one of the areas where i mean right there that's a completion if he doesn't get dragged down, I mean, or if he doesn't um, drop it. By the way, um, I had a lot of people reach out when I said it sounded really loud in there, and they're like, no, Falcons games, man, they're not loud at all. Somebody said they pump in a lot of sound. Look at all the empty seats. I, I genuinely thought Falcons fans were pretty intense. Like they, I thought that they filled this thing out. I thought there were a ton of them. Um, apparently, kind of trash fan base. <laughs> they just do not care about uh going to the stadium i don't know that's kind of crazy anyways um yeah that was that was one of the great throws by jordan love that will not show up and will negatively impact his cpoe um and i say negatively because it should have been positive uh it should have been massively positive in that column but it's he's not going to get that all right yeah so i remember this run now we'll just pick it up on the other side so very simply the biggest culprit here, A.J. Dillon, I was going to get my pen out and all that stuff, but I keep messing that up. I don't have that down. He's just going to run, boom, something like that. But um, biggest culprit here is Zach Tom botches this. But also, A.J. Dillon, not necessarily my favorite decision-making. So keep an eye on Zach Tom, first of all. You can kind of understand what the design of this play is, right? So he's going to come over. They're going to block. So look, this is real simple. He's blocking here. Keep this guy under control. He's getting up to the next level. We got two guys pulling. Block him, block him. I mean, this is bing, bang, boom. So here you got a block. Here you're supposed to have a block. Here you got a block, right? So this should be fine. He actually passed him off. This is perfect. Elton Jenkins comes in. So as long as he can block here and he can push here, there's a heck of a lane here. But look at Zach Tom. Just getting freaking worked. Now, here's the thing. My preference here, even though I don't think he's going to get much, just continue to follow your blockers. Because the point is, even though there's guys here, there's bodies in the way. So when you hit this, you got one arm from this guy, and then you've got your your guys here. Whatever leverage they can push, there's an opposite force going in the opposite direction. So you can probably hit this and push to about here, right? Now, if this was blocked better by Zach Tom, and I don't know how well this is going to stay blocked up, he could probably turn around and tackle you here. So I don't know if this is a big play either way. But just continue. Just do it. But A.J. Dillon, this is the problem he had last year. Instead of just trusting the blocks, he says, nope. I see a lane over this way, even though you kind of don't. But this is where this guy is. He pokes his head in. I'm going to get scared, and I'm going to try to do this. The problem with that is that ain't going to work because this is where all the defenders are, right? It just it, It's the NFL, man. These guys, and you'll see it in a second, it's nothing but defenders there in one second. Don't do it. Don't believe that there's something there. So he gets scared, and he bounces back. Well, here's the other thing. Look at Zach Tom now get just destroyed twice within one second. He just gets freaking thrown like a rag doll. But look, already in that one second, he's here. He's here. He's here. He's about to be here. And and I'm pretty sure there's more coming. Uh, see, the little thing. Look at that. Look at this. Look at all the people swarming. Look at that. It's a dog pile with eight of 11 defenders there. Or close to it. Don't do it. So, Zach Tom, yeah, that's on you. But... Dylan, man, just go. Just go. Just freaking go. There's nothing here. Stop believing that there's something here. It's the NFL. These guys, even these big, fat, 300-pound defensive linemen, they're, they're, they're unbelievably fast. So this play is really kind of strange. Um, essentially, what is thought to have happened, according to the announcers, is he's going to run like this, and the ball is going to travel like this, and they're like, oh, that he missed him. He was too far behind him. 
let's play this out a little bit and keep an eye also not just on Musgrave but on Romeo Dobbs because this is kind of weird to me maybe he just missed by a mile but one of the first things to notice is nobody's even looking sorry that it's all like grayed out so look he doesn't even have his head around but also look where the ball goes I, I can't tell if the ball is here or here or where exactly that's going it looks like it went across his face even though they said it was behind him but look where the ball lands the ball actually the ball lands up here somewhere so the ball's kind of like in the air about here Romeo Dobbs is going to go kind of like this I'm wondering if Romeo Dobbs if he wanted him to kind of settle in here and catch the ball right here we're all assuming he just missed Musgrave I don't know that that's the case I'll play it and then see how he kind of like hooks in over here and he wasn't looking nor neither was Musgrave nobody was looking I don't know who's supposed to catch the pass when nobody even thinks to turn around like oh shoot nobody thought that they were the primary guy but just keep an eye on this and where the ball goes and watch Romeo Dobbs I just want I mean it landed at, at his feet like here and there was a big open space right here I just wonder if this is one of those things where he was supposed to read it and settle down in here as opposed to carrying up and coming in here and catching that pass. I don't know, but either way, um, nobody's looking, so that's problematic. That was followed by a penalty on uh, Rashid Walker, uh, which I think this is now the tip. So penalty on Rashid, we get backed up, and then, yes, tipped. So, I mean, generally, I would assume with a tip, you kind of blame the quarterback. But first of all, Rashid Walker back to back penalty. And then this ball comes out in like one hot second, and it's still almost, he still almost gets hit. That's kind of terrible there. Um, also, keep an eye on Mr. Josh Myers trying to do anything down the field and failing. So he's got to get out here and block something. Check out Mr. Myers. Huh. <laughs> What what are you doing, dude? All right, let's try that one more time. Watch Josh Myers here, because that was one of the guys I was supposed to watch in this game. This is pathetic. What are you doing? Look. Watch. It can't be that hard, man. All right, look. So this is the guy you're trying to block, right? You're trying to get a block here. The play is over here. So he's going to run this way. Don't you think you should come over here and try to block? Why are you running at him and then chasing him this way? What are we doing here? I have, I have no clue what we're doing. I mean, the, the, it gets tipped anyways, but our guy would have just got blown up by him because Josh Myers just has no freaking clue what he's doing. All right, this entire series is the Kenny Clark series. Um, I didn't get all the way through, so I can't tell you how Kenny Clark did all game, but this first series is all Kenny Clark. So the first play is, is going to be a screen, if I remember properly. Um, Kenny is going to get upfield. He's going to be like, whoop, this was too easy. Double back and then catch the guy over here, which in and of itself is impressive. Probably his least impressive of this entire drive, um, which is saying something. Sorry about that stupid background. I'm trying to figure out a way to make that stop but it's just not a thing. So there you go. Kenny catches him from behind. There's number one. This is number two. Now, I'm not going to spend as much time as I did last time on this, but here is my annoyance with this play. It appears as though one of these guys, let's just say he's going to come in and try to block here. So they're trying to create some kind of an alley for the running back. Kenny Clark just gets right upfield and just blows all this up. So our running back has to bounce to the outside. What have I said a thousand times? If you go outside of structure, there's going to be defenders everywhere. Here's the problem, though. Unfortunately, the Packers, being stupid, thought, you know what would be great? If we take Preston and we stunt him to the inside. Well, the problem with that is, now we got him here. We got him over here. So when he comes out, this guy has nobody to block except our linebacker. So a guy that should have been able to make a tackle, so he gets blocked up. He gets blocked up, and this is actually a pretty good play because Preston gets taken out of it by stunting inside at the exact wrong time. So, Kenny, great play. Overall, though, disaster. Keep an eye on 91 and 97. Kenny and Preston.
Kenny just blows it up. But again, and we'll see it from the other angle a little bit here, a little better. We we didn't get to blow this up because of uh, losing edge contain on this. And you could borderline say, well, this is a fantastic play call, in all honesty, because they're trying to run here, and boom, we just do this. Okay, what is the plan for this? Who has the edge? Are you going to say Kenny? Kenny doesn't have the edge. There's no chance. He got upfield faster than 99.9999999% of defensive tackles could have ever expected to, and he still couldn't get the edge. So that's not a plan. You say, well, he has the edge. Okay, but now he doesn't have anybody, so he gets to block over here. So now what do we do? This whole thing is dumb. So you can see, number 70, Matthews, is like, well, okay, he's gone. So then he's going to block out this way, still thinking probably the play is going to come to the inside, and he sees the linebacker just continue to drift, 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 and he's like, oh, I kind of figure out what's going on here. I'm just going to keep pushing him. And then it's not until Quay from the opposite side is able to come over and make a play. I mean, it got blown up. It should have been nothing, but it ended up being something because we got too cute for our own good. Anyways, had a, let me bring the microphone over to my mouth. Had a phone call, forgot where we left off. Next play. Kenny Clark is all you need to know. Well, and Razul Douglas, I suppose. Right in the quarterback's lap. Hits him so he can't get full torque. Picked off. I mean, Kenny Clark wrecked that whole thing. He wrecked it. I mean, he, he again, first play, they got some progress, but Kenny caught it and was able to turn around and book it down the field to make a tackle from behind. Second play, he completely blows it up. Doesn't make a tackle. Some people might, oh, you got to finish. Bull crap, dude. I mean, give me a break. He blew up the entire play and caught the guy 10 yards behind, and, and a running back has the shiftiness and the speed to be able to break to the outside before Kenny can reach him. Aw, shucks. What am I going to do? Give him negative marks for that? That was an unbelievable play. The fact that the rest of the team can't rally and get over there, and the fact that we can't just keep an edge rusher on the edge is not Kenny's fault. Um, and then here, he hits the quarterback as he's throwing, which generates a pick. I mean, Kenny Clark did everything in his power to completely destroy this entire drive by the Falcons. One man wrecking crew. You can see the ball just floundering up there. Picked off. Unbelievable stuff. First play, don't remember what it is, but let's get a look at it. Come on, Jordan, here we go. Oh, yeah. All right. So this is one of those where you look at the offensive line, it's like, come on, man, not good enough. But at the same time, you can see where perhaps a different running back, a potentially better running back, could have done better with this. So here is, so again, as you saw, he's going to run this way. He doesn't have a huge lane to run through, that's true. The first thing that I notice is I just don't see the speed. And I think with more speed and less hesitation, for example, if, if he just goes as fast as he possibly can, there might be a lane to actually run through. Take it step by step here. All right, so... Clearly, we've got, he's trying to wall off here. It's hard to tell. With him coming up this way, it appears that he should be blocking this way and is losing. He is trying to block this way. It's kind of iffy, right? And he's just getting walked out this way. So not a great start from the start. You know, even here, look at this. Trying to block from behind. I mean, come on. Is anybody winning anything? Is this, is this Myers here, or is this Runyon? This must be Runyon. Let's see if Runyon can get a single block up here. Nope. Fail. So, <laughs> failed block. Failed block. Not winning. Uh, not winning. Not really winning. He's trying to squeeze through to get up here and block, but I mean, you know, whatever. All right, so he's following, right? Couple things. Number one, again, if he was a little faster and tighter to his blocker, I mean, you can see that's it. He's gone, but it's a little bit on the slow side. Second of all, let me just ask you, do you think he should hug this way where there is a defensive tackle who is much bigger and stronger and also this guy is, is your offensive lineman is losing? Or do you think you should hug up this way because number one, the, the run is to this side and number two, 
uh, he's actually winning. Now, he's going to lose, but still, which one makes more sense to you? If it's me, I want to run right at his back. That's what I want to do. And I want to just go this way and try to escape this guy. That would be my preference. First of all, he hesitates. Then he lowers his pads and comes in tight to this side, just basically conceding I'm not going to be able to do it, lowers his pads and comes in this way. Bro, the run is behind this way. I mean, yeah, okay, so you got to take him on. So hit him. Hit him right in the freaking jaw. Get behind your blocker and go. So, I mean, again, I don't know how much more he's going to get. The offensive line lost across the board. But I just wish there was something a little better from AJ there. All right, here is the next play. Here, here is my best interpretation of what's going on. We got him coming around to the outside. We got Wicks is going to come in and block him. You've got, I believe this is how it's supposed to go, but it, when it becomes a disaster, you never quite know. Musgrave is going to come over here and try to seal him off this way. And then we've got Yash and Iman who's going to come in and try to block down here. And here is one of the things that is a massive pet peeve if you've ever watched me do this. The dumbest freaking thing on planet Earth, the Packers do this all the time. Either Josh Myers has no idea what he's doing, or he was asked to help here and then come up here and block him. In what freaking universe is the play going to be this way? The linebacker is going to immediately go this way, and this guy is going to be able to run down here and wall him off. No universe. Zero universes in which that happens. And yet the Packers, I see them do that all the time. Another example might just be him trying to get here, which is a little bit more reasonable. Actually, they, they'll, they'll maybe even have him do it. But even, even still, it's a little bit off. The odds that he's going to be able to get over here faster than he can just do this, there's no way. Why do we keep doing that? Have him block here. That's easier. You can chip and boom. Right? That way, you know, if you can create a little hesitation, no way in the world is he going to get there. But everything is a disaster. Um, he kind of does his job, but he hesitates. He completely botches his job. He doesn't do his job. Of course he doesn't do his job. So this whole thing is just a, a complete joke. But let's run it out. So, dang it. Dang it, dang it. Anyways, I wanted to pause there. Let's try that one more time. All right, here's the one block. Musgrave gets too far, tries to turn around, but he gets to the inside. Oh, shoot. So that's already messed up. Now, maybe, 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 boom. Maybe. But again, like I said, just trust the process. Maybe, even though the process is already broken down, he's going to try to continue to follow what he's doing. He gets around that guy. If, if freaking Yash Nyman could have done anything, maybe we have a shot here. You know, if he's out here pushing him down... He could turn it up. Maybe he can kind of come back behind. I mean, especially, look, you got a row of lockers here, right? So maybe there's a universe where if Yash could kind of do something, he can kind of come back this way. I don't know. But this whole thing is just a cluster. It's a disaster. Um, you know, again, maybe if it's Aaron Jones, he can be a little bit shiftier and come back this way and make a play out of it. But look at this. This is a, this is a freaking joke, right? <laughs> I mean, who's doing a single thing on this Packers line? Nobody. Nobody's doing anything. And so that goes nowhere. Just across the board, freaking useless. I hate when we have our offensive linemen like, hey, you come up here and block him. Don't just stupid stop doing that. But also nobody can block. So there's there's that. Then we get this gem of a play. Let's let this ride out here. And sack. Because people don't know what they're supposed to be doing. So I know when this was reviewed, there was a question about perhaps the running back is supposed to come in here and block, right? I mean, look, I don't know. I have no idea. He's right here right now. So either he's just in the wrong spot and Jordan needs to be like, hey, 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 we got a thing over here. You're in the wrong spot. You're an idiot. Or the offensive lineman or somebody needs to do it. As it stands right now, though, this is pretty clearly his responsibility, I mean, as it is. Now, maybe we shouldn't have Patrick Taylor out there. Maybe it should be A.J. Dillon out there, and that's why, because he understands these things. I don't know. But what the heck is this? What is this? I mean, look, listen. Right here. 
right? Rashid Walker, bro, you're telling me that you know right out of the gate you're going to block this guy. You know he exists, right? And you also know that you have a guy to your right. In what universe does this make sense? Do you expect him to jump in and block him? Why don't you say something to him? Or maybe just realize he's got him, I got to get him. I, what, what, I don't know, I don't know entirely what we're doing here, but I guess that's just, we're just going to let him, because Walker has to know he's coming free. Like, you have to know that, and you're just like, nip, whatever. I guess the running back's an idiot, it's not going to be on me when we go back and watch the tape, because I'm going to do my job over here. I, by the way, one more thing I wanted, <laughs> wanted to demonstrate to you. Rashid Walker tries to help him up. Watch Jordan Love's demeanor, which is basically, don't freaking touch me, dude. No, nope, don't talk to me. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right, first play by the Falcons in the other direction. I had to watch this a couple times. Um, couple things. First of all, so the, the run is going to be in this here direction. Nope, wrong one. This here direction. All right. Rashawn, first of all, fantastic job sealing off the edge. Linebackers are the biggest issue. Biggest issue by far, in my opinion here. Number one, remember how I said asking this guy to block here is stupid? The only team you can consistently do that against is the Packers. Why? Because Quay Walker loves to just stand there over and over and over. It's just, he just, he's like, well, well, you never know. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. We have three guys. We got one, we got two, and then there's another guy, I think it's Nixon, that's going to be here watching the cutback. He doesn't need to be concerned about over here. We're good, but he just waits because you never know. 70 walks up there and is like, are you serious? You're just going to stand here? All right, I guess you're blocked. And so he just, he's out of the play. Secondly, uh, Devondre, the, the, terrible effort. Terrible effort. This edge is sealed. The running back has to bounce to the outside. Quay could have easily come over here and blown this up, but he doesn't. Let's try to slowly run this out now. All right, so they're reading it right. Okay, so right away, great after, right downhill. Perfect. I love it. Rashawn got the edge. Boom, love it. He's out trying to get outside here, taking on a double team. He's got this. I mean, so far we're looking good. He's kind of peering down here again this is what i don't necessarily love quay we got it bro we got it okay he's coming to wall you up you need to see that and you need to get out in front of him right go here at least stay in front of this guy don't allow him to just walk up and block you he's so scared of this he's terrified constantly of this we got it don't let him get you go but no Look at that. He just walks right up there, and he's still standing there. He's scared because he's worried about the quarterback doing this. Look, I, I, again, if this is Joe Barry, knock it off, right? If, if this is a thing, come on, man. This is the responsibility here. And, and, and maybe it is. Maybe they're like, no, he needs to crash down in here to kind of secure the backside. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But, but it's freaking insane to me that we constantly just erase our own linebackers because they're just being told or are just choosing to stand there. And Lyman can just walk up. I mean, he's walking. And it's like, are you seriously just going to stand there? Sure enough, he is. So he's out of the play because we just don't use him. We just tell him to stand there just in case. Um, and again, you need to be able to read this. If he's coming up to block you this way, it's not a quarterback sneak this way. It's not. And if it is, that's... He took himself out. I mean, they're they're not blocked. There's no blocking here. <sighs> Aggravating. All right. So, again, if he comes this way, what do we got? We got a linebacker right here. This should be good, right? We're good to go. Here is the problem. There's our linebacker. This is where he gets he he gets ended ends up getting pushed way back here, and it's almost like he's walking backwards. Like, get off of me. So now we have to have a corner, Jair, come up and try to fill because our safety also not able to, you know, shed this and kind of come over or anything. So we got to have Jair come up and try to clean this up. I mean, Devondre, dude, come on, man. Again, we allowed the, the lineman to come up here and push this way. Again. 
just beat him to the outside. Good Lord. Like, well, what if he cuts back? That's what you got 93 for. The big man taking on the double team. Squ you know, the smashed little area there. We're so terrified of over-pursuing that we constantly under-pursue and are being taken out of it. So Rashawn tries his best. I mean, again, I'm not taking notes or anything off of him. He's sealed the edge. He's the only guy on this play that I can tell that did a decent job. 93 also. He's able to shed a double team and comes flying in. And then, again, Jair to come save the day. Here's our freaking linebackers over here. Unbelievably embarrassing. I'm so sick of that. This is the same crap I saw last year. The linebackers way out of the play, taking themselves out of the play by by being too cowardly to freaking pursue. And, again, if that's a coaching point, linebackers, I apologize. Then it's on Joe Barry, but something's got to change because I'm freaking sick of this. We invest in linebackers and tell them to play scared. So now we got to have a corner come up and try to take out Bijan. Freaking tired of it. Yeah, there you go. Push him out of bounds. What a waste. What a freaking waste. Sorry, I'm a little annoyed. So a couple interesting notes on this. Number one, we're not set. Um, we got to be a little quicker. I mean, maybe they hurried to the line. I'm not entirely sure, but um, that's kind of a problem. Number two, I don't know if you realize this. We actually missed three interceptions in this game. Um, you know, check out number 91 out here. I'm half joking, but also, I mean, it could have happened. But anyways, let's go ahead and run it out. What did I just push? Caps lock? My bad. So they're not, 95 comes running in. So again, this isn't great. I mean, <laughs> starting here and then just not being set, you know, I mean, it's just, again, it's the little stuff that we got to figure out here. Um, But anyways, it's not a run. 95 actually does a great job, all things considered. Look at that. He's already kind of peering to the inside. So nice job by Wyatt there. We also got more internal uh, interior pressure right here. So he's, I mean, things are collapsing. There's really nothing going on coverage-wise, so he just decides to dump it off, throws it to him. Bijan, Butterfingers. Come on, man. Get it. Oh, he could have had that. I mean, legitimately, he could have had that. <laughs> Maybe you don't blame uh, Preston for not being able to make a diving interception. Let's see if we can see it from this angle here. I was just hanging there. He could have had it. He knows it. So that's three missed opportunities for picks, just so we're clear. I don't necessarily want to do every single play, but this is the next play. Um, a lot of people, I think, are trash and quay for this. I actually kind of like it. He doesn't end up making the play, but I just... So, essentially, he's going to drop here in zone. He's going to read and break on the ball and dive, and I, I, it's hard to even see exactly what happened. He must have just missed place where he put his hand. It looked like it should have been a pass breakup. Um, again, people get really annoyed when it's like you could have had it, but you didn't. I tend to give marks for putting yourself in a position where you could have had it. You know, I mean, his his coverage was perfect. It's just his hand was like two inches too high for the pass breakup on on just a really nice ball. So I I just I don't like people just doing the wrong things. I don't like people just making mistakes and being stupid. Um Putting yourself in a position to succeed and just missing by a hair because of basically flukish things, that doesn't bother me nearly as much. And that seems to be what makes the fan base the most angry. Beautiful break on the ball. I, I mean, it's like it's like it went through his hand. I don't know how that happened. He must have just missed it by a second. But the ability to do that is what I like about Quay. He did a fantastic job. Everything was perfect. I, I just I, The ball just missed his hand. It's like, you ever play that... Uh, the heck is that... Uh, racket thing with the birdie. You ever try to hit that? I swear my racket goes right through the birdie every single time. It's an annoying, frustrating game. All right, so I just want to point this out again. Just I same exact note from the hesitancy of the linebackers. Ready? And again, there there there's merit to this because once in a while there's going to be a trick play, except when the one time that there was and the quarterback ran where the linebackers are nowhere to be found, and we all blame Rashawn for that. Fine. But anyways, um, I'm sure there are times when having hesitant linebackers helps, but just, you know, 98% of the time it doesn't. So check this out. So look, first of all, Lucas Van Ness swings to the inside and pushes up this way. So immediately he's like, oh crap, and comes up here, right? Okay, fair enough. So he's going to shoot up, big gap right there. What are we doing? What's, what are we doing? 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 Right? Quay's got to come out here. I get that. What are you doing? Apparently, I have 27 seconds to end this. So let's uh, go ahead and um, play this out. And you can see hesitates, 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 stands there, stands there. Oh, look, 65 is going to come up and block you. Oh, cool. 
Great. And now he gets blocked out of the play. Freaking wonderful job.